Lancaster to visit some family. Fun fact, we used to live in Lancaster. Yeah, but I didn't grow up there. No, I grew up in Granada Hills. I lived in this house from a little bitty baby until Vince drug me out of this house to Lancaster. You're getting ahead in the story. While Deanna grew up in posh Granada Hills... It was not posh. It was a rock's throw from the Knott's Landing Street. This is where the Knott's Landing characters lived. So while Deanna lived in the posh neighborhood of Granada Hills, I grew up in Reseda, which is the poor neighborhood that Danielson moves into in The Karate Kid. I lived here from a baby until I was nine. Yeah, we're different. I'm from Reseda, you're from the hills. That's how we're different. Then my parents moved me to this house in Northridge. Northridge is just on the other side of the tracks from Granada Hills. Instead of tracks, it's the other side of this park. Northridge is famous for the 1994 earthquake. This Northridge house allowed me to go to the same school as Deanna. But first, two doors down lived Carolyn, a six-foot-tall Swedish blonde. She was truly the girl next door. Or in this case, two doors down. We used to ride our bikes on this street corner and Carolyn would come out and hang out with us at this wall. One day when I was 14, it was just Carolyn and I, and she says, like, totally, have you met this awesome girl, Deanna? Carolyn was a valley girl, like Gagme. Deanna who? She has kind of a big nose, but she's totally hot. No. I'll introduce you at school tomorrow. Right here between classes, Carolyn points up and says, that's Deanna. She was wearing a pink town and country shirt and a skirt. It was like a ray of light had shined upon the school, just a glow about her. It was like the first day of summer at the beach. Just a breath of fresh air. But it wasn't mutual love at first sight. Deanna was in love with another guy whose last name was Rocco, one letter off from mine. To complicate things further, my parents moved me to this house in Palmdale. So while Deanna was dating Rocco from the posh hills of Granada, I dated a girl that lived in this trailer park. Of course, that didn't last. My heart was broken, so I cracked open my yearbook and called Deanna. No, nope, not exactly. I wasn't the first girl you called. Hey, what's up? Oh, you're dating him? How about Tangie? How's she? Hey, Tang, what's up? Oh, you're dating him? How's Kendra? What's she up to these days? What's up, Kiga? Really? Still dating him, huh? Deanna? Hey, Deanna, what's up? So then he asks me out on a date. But he's 15. He doesn't have a driver's license. But his friend does. I remember arriving at her house and greeting her in the foyer. She was wearing a skirt and had these amazing long tan legs. In this moment, I knew I had to get these legs wrapped around me. Don't be crass. That's true. That night, we ended up here at E.T. Park. I tried my best moves, but no dice. She was still in love with Rocco. I mean, it was only one letter off from mine. Should be good enough, right? It's good enough to get you a second date. And that second date ended up here at E.T. Park as well. I courted her for three months. I would invite her over to this house. I would clean the house. I'd vacuum it up. I'd get it all nice and spick and span, and then She'd cancel on me. This happened several times. It would just kill me. I think she was afraid to be whisked away to Palmdale, an hour away from, you know, the posh Granada Hills. I, I remember my mom saying to her depressed son that this girl probably wasn't the right one for her. But I persisted. On Wednesday, July 12th, my 16th birthday, I took my driver's test here at the DMV in Lancaster. And afterwards, I drove the hour down to the valley to spend the day with Deanna. Because that's all I wanted for my birthday was to spend the day with Deanna. And I mean, I was worried she would cancel, but how could you cancel on somebody's birthday wish? You'd have to be super mean to do that. I didn't. I remember we drove all over the valley down to Panga Boulevard to Ventura. The following Saturday, I took her to the fancy Odyssey restaurant here in Granada Hills. Once again, we ended up at E.T. Park, but this time I asked her to be my girlfriend. Aww. And I said yes. She did. <laughs> A few weeks later, she dumped me. Yeah, he sped away from my house. I was pissed. I knew instantly I had made a mistake. I came back though, and we went for a walk. Right here on this corner, the Knott's Landing Street corner. She tells me she made a mistake. I said, well, we're still broken up. 
If you want to get back together, you're going to have to ask me. He made me ask him. Will you be my boyfriend? I had to think about it. Yeah, right. Of course I said yes. So we dated for the next two years. I lived in Palmdale, but I worked in San Bernardino. So I would get up and leave for my job an hour away in San Bernardino to be there by 10. I'd work all day till seven at night. Then I would drive the hour and a half to Posh Granada Hills to pick Deanna up at her job at Domino's. So I used to work at Domino's Pizza, which used to be located right here. Then we'd go out and I would have her back by 12. My curfew was actually 11, but if we said we were going to a movie, then it was 12. So we always said we were going to see a movie, so I'd get her home at 12. Yeah, then about an hour later, I'd sneak out. We ended up at this lookout on Braymore in Northridge. Yeah, I remember one time we were naked in the back seat of the car, and you know, it's all hot and steamy, and the windows are all fogged, and there's a cop knocking on the window. Oh my God, it was so embarrassing. I recall that it took four. <laughs> Ever to get you naked. And then one yeah. night after a hot, steamy makeout session, you refused to come out again. Yeah, I was afraid that our first time was gonna be in the back of a Ford probe. Eh. Our first time was actually in this house. She cried and called me God. It was awesome. <sighs> after Friday night at makeout point, I would drop her off. I would drive back home to this house. My parents would leave a plate of food out for me so I'd get to have second dinner. I'd sleep a little. Then the following morning, I would get up. I would head back to my job in San Bernardino. I'd start the whole process over of picking her up, going out, ending up make out point, sneaking out. At 18, I wanted to move out with some of my girlfriends. At 18, I had a good thing going here. I had free plates of food. My mom did my laundry. I didn't have to pay rent. It was fantastic. But Deanna moving out with a bunch of single girls and single guys coming over, ugh. On one hand, I had free food, free rent, Free laundry, on the other hand, sex. Which do you think I picked? So he convinced me to move into this Palmdale apartment with him. Six months later, when we moved into this Lancaster apartment. At 19 years old, we bought this house out here in Lake LA. There is no lake. We bought it for $39,500. Our parents helped us with the down payment. Our monthly payment was 330 bucks, which allowed us to save money for a diamond ring. Once again, I took her to dinner here at the Odyssey. And once again, we end up here at E.T. Park. Where I proposed. <gasps> we actually got married here at the Odyssey. Vincent and Deanna Roca. And so began our traveling adventures, starting with Jamaica. We returned to this house. We lived here for 11 years, and most of the time, I commuted over an hour to Encino. I worked in this building as an insurance claim supervisor, and I hated it. After 11 years, we sold our Lake LA house, and we bought this house in Palmdale. I quit my job in insurance, and I went back to college to pursue my passion in working with animals. And I made the feature film Kisses and Caroms, which you can actually see this house in that movie. After three years, we sold Palmdale. And rented this Silmar house for almost two years. Before buying this house. In posh Granada Hills, about a mile away from her parents' house. That was a really long fun fact. What do you mean? Fun facts are supposed to be little short snippets of information. It was only like 10 minutes long. Exactly. Okay, let me give you an example. This video was shot on our anniversary. 27 years together today and 18 years married. That's a fun fact? That is a fun fact. I think so. I guess maybe it was fun for you. is supposed to be short. It's just supposed to, it's just supposed to be a short snippet of information that started. A fun fact would be that today we are shooting this video on our 27 year together anniversary. Married for 18 years together 27 years. 
Well, you made that really long. <laughs> Shorter than your 10 minutes. <laughs> a fun fact would be like today, we are shooting this video on our 27 year anniversary. Okay, example. Today, this video was shot on our 27 year anniversary. Why do you have to keep saying that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Today's video was shot on your anniversary. Today's yeah. Even in regular conversation, you wouldn't say to somebody, today we, this video was shot on our 27 year anniversary. Right. It doesn't even sound right. right. Fun fact, today is our, this video. It was shot on our anniversary. Why wouldn't you say like, this video shot was on shot on our 27th anniversary, but you even keep saying I our know. 27 okay. year anniversary. Okay. Like, I don't even know why you keep saying that. I don't know.